What's going on, everybody? December 1st. It's crazy. Um, where does time go? Talked about it the other day. It just goes whew, round and round and around we go. 24 hours and it's a new day. Here it is Thursday already. Just two days ago, I was talking about how time flies and I'm sitting here getting ready to give you guys a public rundown once again. Um, let's go ahead and do it. For the first time in a long time, and I mean several months, probably four months at least, maybe longer, five months, let's say, June, July, June, July, August, September, October, November, maybe even six months. There's an S right here, an S. That stands for stable. That's the first time in the last three days the lake has not changed the lick. It's sitting right at 397.21. So remember that. This is to the hundredths, the 0 0.21. 0 0.25 is equal to 3 inches. So right now we basically are sitting about 5 foot 9 inches below full pool. Approximately. Maybe 5 foot 10 inches. Okay. 0 to 1 is the clarity especially up in the upper arms. Anywhere up north where the flow came in, it's dirtier water. 54 to 56, although the last two mornings and nights have been really cold. And what affects the shallow water the most, first of all, cold water sinks. So the shallow backwaters cool down first. Down south is going to be a little more warmer. The main body, the main lake, um, stays a little warmer so the backs of the creeks and things will cool down quickly um, in the shallow water but what happens too is it depends on how long we're cool for so for example if we reach 32 degrees at one in the morning and by 6 7 a.m it's already up to 45 degrees again then it's only a few hours in that real cold temperatures it also only affects it when we go below what the water temperature is. So if the water temperature is 54 degrees, it's got to be below 54 for a substantial amount of time, usually 10, 12 hours, to really begin to have some major effects. But we're starting to really definitely drop in the low 50s, 52 some places in the backs of the creeks early mornings, 56, 58 even sometimes in these warm, trendy after day, afternoon. Um, lake's in okay shape. What, you know for what it's worth. We've been talking a lot about how tough the fall has been. And I have had dozens of comments, dozens of private messages, dozens of local people that have lived here for 20 something years saying that the fall has been tough fishing for the last five or six, um, especially once they removed the vegetation. We don't need to be redundant about that again. Um, it's facts. There are plenty of bass in Lake Fork. This is not a bashing Lake Fork. Um, it's just different. With low water conditions, the fish do things different. They don't have the vegetation. One thing I think that's really huge right now is the water is at a level where a lot of the familiar trees that have appendages that we're used to them using, those appendages are sticking out of water in the three to five foot, we've dropped five feet. So the fish love to suspend in those appendages and they can sunbathe. So three to five feet in appendage trees offshore in the middle of nowhere, the mouth of Wolf Creek, for example, there's trees all through the mouth of Wolf Creek. And they love to suspend in those trees, but those tree, a lot of those appendages are out of water. So it's forcing the fish to do different things. That is making everything tougher on us. It's not that there's a lack of fish, I think the numbers are down. The shallow water count by shock therapy does show that they didn't come to the shallow water. Um, they were deep. There's more fish deep than shallow in Fork. The surrounding lakes are not like that. With all that being said, kind of rounding it about, it's why I'm leading you to something. I think you'd be better off if you're coming to Fish Lake Fork to stay deep, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and give you some decent public information. I know a lot of you, you kind of feel like I'm doing nothing but pushing you to the members only channel. And I am, but I'm not, okay? I really need to keep this public alive. I need to keep it growing too, and I wanna keep you happy. If you are a shallow fisherman 
and you just don't want to push deep. I got a little goodie box right here. Um, I would go throw in square bits, okay? And I would go throw in something red, like chili bowl here, or my favorite color, just like a red chartreuse, okay? But throw up, this is a Strike King 2.5, I think it is, 2.0, 2.5. It's not the little one, it's not the big one. It's, not the, it's in between the little one and the 4.0. I think it's the 2.5. Um, I would throw this square bill, those two colors, and I would throw them in creek swings that reach the bank. They're called channel bank swings. It needs to be up, up against the shoreline. Not creek swings down the middle of the creek. Maybe it's few. If you're aware of a creek swing that's kind of got a ledge to it, shallow, flat near it, that might be good. But creek swings that swing up against the bank. Okay? Look at your map and find the creek. Follow it where it swings against the bank. And go fish that section only, back and forth, with chili bowl. That's the color, chili bowl. You might be surprised what you might run into. It's not too cold yet for that kind of bite. That's shallow, if you're going to fish shallow. If you're going to look deep, I think your odds are a lot better. And I've got a couple of baits in here that I'm going to share with you. Um, one would be an Alabama rig. Okay, and you can rig that up multiple ways. I like it weedless. This is a weedless version of an Alabama rig. Um, and the other, to me, I do have some goodies in here that I'm going to share with members only. And I'm trying not to have to pull any of those out. All right, Alabama rig would be a flutter spoon. Um, a big flutter spoon right now could be deadly. It's just a matter of the right location to throw it. Um, and by the way, backing up just a step, just to show you that I love you. Uh, we talked about throwing the square bill in creek swings, channel bank swings. Another great place would be on any one of the hard concrete walls, the wall of the dam, the wall of the bridge 17 at Mustang, the wall of the bridge on 515 East, the wall of bridges on 515 West, bridge corners, 2946 bridge corners, anywhere there's concrete, this would be great for that. So there, I gave you a spot to throw at that too, besides creek swings. Tell me I don't love you, public. Come on, come on. Okay, someone give me a like on that one, please. The spoon, the flutter spoon. This is one of my favorite flutter spoons made by Joe Spates. Um, what you don't know is Joe Spates makes these flutter spoons, and years ago, him and Kelly Jordan got together, and Kelly Jordan really helped Joe design these, but what they're made of is what's really cool. Um, they are coated. This, this is made of a special material that makes a special sound when it contacts things, especially when it contacts hard bottom or roads, rock, things like that. I'm going to leave it up to Joe Spates to share what he makes them with. But this makes this spoon special, what he actually makes the spoon with itself. Um, but this is really good when it's got the flasher on it. And uh, the flutter spoon in about 18 to 20 feet of water. And an Alabama rig in about 18 to 20 feet of water is probably the other way that I would suggest that you guys fish as public, public rundown. My favorite spoon to throw this time of year is from Lake Fork Tagalures. It's called the barfish color, this is the big one, but the barfish color um, could be deadly as well. Okay, so there. I've got a few more really cool goodies in this box that I'm saving for members only. And uh, I can't think of a whole lot more to talk about. Um, it is December, guys. Um, hey, fishing's usually tough this time of year on fork. In any lake like fork, when the water gets cold, Mark Pack used to really like to break out a flipping jig and or like a Texas rig brush hog in dark colors, usually a black, black and blue, um, something like that. And he would just fish the creek swings. Um, and he'd really concentrate in two or three swings in a day, and he wouldn't leave those straight swings. Um, he would spend a lot of time going to the same spot, knowing those fish are lethargic, they're not going to move around a lot. Um, 
and he liked the creek swings that had roots or, or you know, big oak trees that, that had rooted down into the creek itself. Um, so that, again, is just another thing that's up and coming here for December. Mark used to always say, it's December, break out your flipping stick or your pitching stick. And on Fort, we don't usually go flipping and pitching a lot of things, sometimes the docks, but they're pretty much under out of water right now. What he meant was pitching your jig on stumps and creek swings. And so get another public tip. Sharing from my good buddy Mark Pack, who's watching over us from high to sky. Um, and other than that, guys, I don't know. Heck, the holidays are here. I ask that you just kind of be, be aware of this time of year that things can really change a lot, too. You can um, you can get up like two days ago, and it felt like Florida. It was 60, 70 degrees with major humidity. And then the very next day, it, it's at freezing level. I've seen Lake Fork actually have a swing of 35 to 40 degrees in less than five minutes. Um, I literally, and I think it was about February, um, four or five years back, and in the morning, if you would have dressed by the weather only, you would have been in shorts and t-shirts. And it was literally about 68, 72 degrees, but fog damn and humid and, and I mean, comfortable temperature, very moist, but comfortable temperature, kind of smelled and felt like subtropical, felt like you're in Florida. And then all of a sudden, and Five minutes, a north blow came, a north front approached, blew all the fog off the lake, and dropped it almost 40 degrees in just a few minutes. And if you didn't have your good cold stuff to put on, you were in trouble. And I mean, if you were way up a creek, like Birch Creek, if you were somewhere where you had a big idle time and you couldn't get, and even running in that is so cold, if you were 15, 20 minutes away or, or more from from a dock or a launch ramp for safety, you were miserable and, and you could potentially have been in trouble. It was that cold that fast. So that's the last thing I want to share with you is be super safe out there. Other than that, I thank you. Um, I do want to invite you over once again to the members only channel. I now have two members channel. I have the first members level, which is $4.99 a month. I share the same report with you as I'm in with you, but in much more detail. I share a lot more tips and tricks like they're in this box. I get a little more in depth in locations. I use the rule of three to dial people into where to be, where the best part of the lake to be fishing is. And so basically it's an upgraded fishing report from what you're getting now and considerably upgraded. I tell you the truth. I tell you exactly what McFarland Fishing is doing on the water with my clients. So it's kind of like getting the info of my guide trip. Not kind of, it is. You Next spring, March, April, May, June, July, even some of February when I get going, you will get the guide report, what I am doing with my clients. Exactly, to the T, no bars held, in the members only report twice a week for $4.99 a month. The next upgraded channel is $9.99 a month. And I'm actually doing one video a week. You have access to the members only, run down twice a week and then you have an additional video that's done once a week with an exceptionally detailed lesson chosen topic mostly by you the upgraded subscriber so the upgraded subscribing channel will put in requests for topics things to learn about and then I will in turn do those lessons for that upgraded channel only. The last three lessons have been over 20 minutes, 26 minutes, super, super detailed. I talked about creek swings. I talked about rods and reels and the use for the particular rods and particular reels, specs and everything else. And I think I talked about, I think I want to talk about fishing line and how to care for your fishing line. Um, and the next one's gonna be terminal. Terminal, both weights, keeping them in what type of boxes, how do I keep them organized? and hooks, what type of hooks, what type of things, how do I carry these in my boat, etc. So, public rundown, members only rundown, and upgraded members only also includes one extra special, two extra special things. Once a month, I will choose a winner from the upgraded members only channel, and they will win a care package from me that will include Baits from my current pro staff positions with Impact Shad, with Tie Lines UV, with Go Fish, with Lake Fork Tackle Lures, with anyone that I've got, you'll get packages. 
I may decide to give you some of the monthly hot baits that we were catching them on. So example, if we were catching them on the square bills for the month of, of January, and I may throw you a couple of those. But once a month, there'll be a winner for the Upgraded Members Only channel. And once it reaches 100 members, I'm going to have once a year a free guide trip that one lucky winner will get as well. Okay? So that's it, guys. That's the public rundown. So come on over. Make a choice. Come over to the members only for $4.99. Come all the way over to the upgraded members. It's called Let's Talk Fishing for $9.99 a month. You won't regret it. All right? Appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button below. Comment below. Sharing information you want to share with me. Ask any questions you have. And um, I wish you all great fishing and happy holidays.